Hello everyone, welcome to Toxic Google. I'm Kevin Velk, and today we have uh, the director, writer, and producer of uh, No Escape, John Andrew Dottle. Hello, thanks Hello. for having us. Good to be here. Thank you. So, phenomenal film, guys. Uh, can you guys you. just go ahead and just set it up uh, for us what the movie is about and just kind of go through just the story of it? Sure. You want to do that? Sure, yeah. It's about an American family who uh, goes to Southeast Asia for the father's job and the day they get there. Um, a violent coup erupts and they're caught in a crossfire between um, uh, a civil war on the ground and they need to escape the country not knowing anyone there or the language um, and that's really it. What was crazy I think about the movie, what was really really awesome was how it's like this classic action thriller movie which has just been really missing from today's market but you know there's that scene where uh, you have Owen Wilson tossing his daughters over to Lake Bell on the other side of the building and there's, there's that scene. I remember seeing the trailer and I was like okay, that's going to be an intense scene but there's literally like a dozen of those. <laughs> and so can you talk about the balance of you know, moving the story along but inserting a lot of those kind of oh my god moments, are they gonna survive? Yeah, I mean we really wanted to, in this film, keep the audience off balance where you know, over and over it's something breaks one way and you think it's gonna you know, be good but then it's bad and, you know, and, and to try to throw in irregular uh, uh, patterns to things where, where you never quite know which way it's going. And, and uh, yeah, and to try to find as many uh, any as many moments of quiet tension as we could, as you've seen, it's you know got a lot of big set pieces and a lot of really you know big action, but we really like the idea of really tense, quiet action as well. And so, calibrating you know calibrating that kind of intensity over a, a long movie is kind of uh, tricky to do sometimes. No, for yeah. sure. And there's a ton of that in the movie, actually. I mean, that's I think that's what's great about it. And you worked on you directed Devil. Yep. And uh, you know what was great about that movie was that basically took place right in an elevator, and that was very very small. And this is kind of a small movie as well. There's not really too many set pieces. You're kind of in the hotel, and then you're on the streets, and it's I think in the, on a river. And so there's a lot of that. A lot of that. So you can you talk about that in terms of the scope of it and trying to keep it small and intimate, but still knowing that there's this huge event going on on the outside. Yeah. Well, one thing we really love is is playing with subjectivity. In in Devil, we actually did a lot like. For every scene in the elevator, we focus on one character and then see what they're seeing. And so we're seeing their reactions and then sort of what they're looking at. And in that, you know, in that movie, it really rooted you in every scene in one character's world. And in this, we really wanted to stay with the family the whole time. So it's this like, you know, big catastrophic event told from a very finite uh, point of view where we're with them the whole time. and. Uh, and you learn about things as they learn it. You know, if they're hearing something we can't understand, you know, we, we don't subtitle the language if they can't understand it. We, we're we're rooted with them, and and we, you know, I, I believe that that gives you a much more uh, visceral and kind of intense experience, and it, it it puts you more into the like empathetic state with uh, with your main characters. Yeah, we like the idea too of in a crisis, just the the confusion that ensues over the first, you know hours or days, um, you know, like thinking about just like 9-11 here in America, like that whole first day is like no one's cell phone worked, and, you know, at least in New York, you couldn't get a hold of anyone and it was, you're really dependent on the information you could, you know, gather on the streets and, and a lot of that was misinformation and so we like, you know, that subjectivity to keep it, you know, we never cut away to a God's eye view of the city or to, you know, anyone back in Washington DC looking at the news or anything, it's, it's very, um, you know, rooted in their perspective and that was also very, you know, helpful for us, given that we didn't have a huge budget to make this movie, we had to keep it, uh, you know, that subjective perspective really helped us keep, uh, you know, the set pieces, uh, you know, more minimal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I thought that was incredible. I love, I, I actually took note of that. That was actually one of my questions was with you no know, subtitles. I love that because it, as an audience member, a lot of people do put that in, like, especially in like TV and stuff, and you're following along, but I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, what are they saying? What is yeah. it? Just listen. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really crazy. So that, that was phenomenal. And I, and I love what you're talking about with um, just keeping it with the family because it was very true, right? Like, mm -hmm. that was the thing. You were completely always focused on them and always moving around, always with one of them. You know, it never cut away to another character or another family, whatever. They were always interacting with, you know, Lake Bell, Owen Wilson, and the girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I kind of want to talk about your guys' uh, partnership that you guys have with working with each other and mm -hmm. the balance between acting or uh, directing and writing and producing and so what that balance has been for the two of you guys. In the different styles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, you know it's a pretty blurry line, but you know it sort of breaks down. I write and direct. Drew writes and produces, and 
Um, and so, I mean, it's basically, we, we talk about everything. Like, you know, when, when we're shooting, we're both at the monitors together and we're talking about like, you know, oh, this isn't working and that isn't, you know, and, and often uh, I'll go and talk to the actors and Drew will, you know, uh, talk to crew or studio or anyone else on set and, and then we'll meet back at the monitors and keep going. And Yeah, uh, I mean, the relationship between director and producer is always, you know, a lot of the activity bleeds from one to the to the other, and the fact that we're brothers, I think there's even more bleed. And I think with each yeah. movie we make together, it becomes a little bit more and more. So it's, um, you know, John's very much the director, and I'm very much the producer. But there's so much of the you know, producerial elements that you know that John handles, and that's really, um, yeah, it's it, it gets more and more blurry with every movie, I think. Yeah, and I, I mean, and Drew's sort of like a hybrid. Like, there's not many producers who would sit through like every day of editorial. Um, and frankly, not many producers that like directors would enjoy, you know, <laughs> being there every day. Would let to be there every <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where you know, it's like you know, through editorial, it's like Drew and me and and Elliot, our editor, like, you know, every day we're like, you know, three grumpy, you know, grumpy dudes, just like, <laughs> you're like, ah, this doesn't work. Yes, it does. But you know, it's like in between the three of us, we we sort through a lot of, we cover yeah. a lot of ground. It's good we have an odd number. It breaks a lot of ties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You say who gets final cut. Or who gets final edit, final say over stuff. <laughs> we never really get to that, honestly. Yeah, I, mean, we're, we're, I think we're always able to, no. you know, convince one another. Or if there's something that we disagree on and we put it up in front of an audience, usually it's the audience that you know um, informs us, you know, yeah. if it's working or not. And and we put a lot of stock in those first several screenings. We we have family and friends or friends of friends that are a little bit more objective than our personal friends. So um, it, you get a sense in the room. You don't really see the movie clearly until you see it with. A, r a crowded room, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was insane last night when we saw it. We saw it with the full theater, and people went crazy for it. And it blew my expectations because I knew it was going to be Thank this you. great action thriller. And like I, you know, I was telling you guys earlier that you know, it reminded me of those classic like '80s, '90s movies that was just you know intense. But this is more intense than any action thriller that I've probably seen. Like I'm telling you, th there's you. so <laughs> many scenes in this with people who have not seen it yet. It is, it is, it is. Batch, like the, the person next to me, it, the person next to me and I were were sitting there, and the whole time I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like you're pulling back from the scene, and even though it's not real, you just feel in, completely engulfed in it. And so it's Thank you. it's absolutely intense. And uh, I kind of want to talk about the genesis of the story, just kind of where this came from, because I knew this took a while to get produced, right? It was it about did. seven, eight years. Yeah. And so yeah. what was the what was the struggles there, and kind of where did this idea come from? Well, the genesis, uh, my father and I went to Thailand uh, in 2006. And like right before we got there, a coup actually happened. And uh, the generals had taken over the country and kicked out the prime minister. And, and so we showed up in the immediate aftermath. And it was just, you know, there was just a tension, you know, like it was impossible to be there and not be thinking about that. You know what I mean? There was armed guards all over the place. As our car was pulling into the hotel, they were searching it for bombs. and. You know, and there's just this like, you know, just this tension of like, you know, could this go badly? <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, and I started thinking, you know, what if I had little kids with me? Like, how would that how would that play out? And we had previously been to Thailand. We're we're the two oldest of six kids, and uh, and on a previous trip to Thailand, we had our two little sisters with us. Uh, uh, Lindsay and the bees and and so we we sort of wrote these girls after our little sisters and they're they're very similar in personality and stuff to our little sisters and uh, and you know we were you know you know consider you know we were like 10 years older than them so we always had this like protective um, you know street we traveled a bunch you know as a family too so we I don't know we took a lot of details from our own personal family travels and and I mean, obviously, it never went this badly, but <laughs> thank God, uh, thank God, yeah. scars or anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I can talk a little bit about just how how challenging it was to get made. I mean, we it was very close to getting made several times before this time, and uh, you know, it was one of those people love the script. All the financiers and studios would read the script, and we heard so many times that you know they sat down to read ten pages, and and uh, you know, and ended up reading the whole script, you know, at midnight in bed, and like we kept getting that comment, but. We come in with our, our pitch and say we want to shoot it in Thailand, and the kids are you know seven and nine, and uh, um, you know. And we want to cast Owen Wilson. And we, we want to cast, cast Owen Wilson. Yes, not like, known for action. You know? and we want Owen Wilson, and yeah. So I mean, it, there's multiple levels of, of risk when it comes to uh, financing. That um, you know, these guys are just wired to you know mitigate risk, and, and they saw 
a lot of execution risk. You know, will audiences accept Owen in this movie? Will the kids be good enough, or will their performances be, you know, subpar, and that will the whole movie really suffer as a result? You know, will you be able to actually get um, the action that you have on the page? Um, you know, for this kind of small budget, is that even possible? And so there's a lot of those things. It was an easy one to say no to, and and the ones that did say yes, we get all the way down the road, and then. For one reason or another, they just yank it at the last minute. And uh, in the, the previous iteration, right before the one that we actually made it with, Bold Films, um, but the previous iteration, we were actually the night before flights to Thailand to go make the movie. And deals were done with the actors, and the locations were all set. We had been there to location scout, and our Thai crew was waiting for us. And it, it, it imploded the night before we left. And it was really heartbreaking. And, uh, um, and that, at that like moment, right before Thanksgiving, I remember we weren't we weren't <laughs> yeah. supposed to be there for Thanksgiving, and then suddenly we're there for Thanksgiving, <laughs> super depressed <laughs> and broke, and like oh, like, you know, totally broke. Totally yeah, and broke. I was like, it's like we were literally going to fly to Thailand and like cash a big check too. And oh, like, suddenly, no. It's like suddenly the yeah. next year's worth of income just evaporated. Yeah. Like, oh. And we had no, we had nothing on deck, and and you know we had a couple loose opportunities, but it was uh, it was a really uh, devastating moment, and. Um, you know, and I remember John, you know, I got the call and then it was the call I had to make to John was really um, one I, I dreaded more than any, any other call I've ever made. And, um, and I remember John is saying, okay, emotionally I have to just, you know, back away a little bit and just, if we can rebuild it, great, but I can't, you know, I, I can't keep doing this. And uh, I totally understood and just kind of quietly on the sides, I was carving more money out of the budget and going back out to some financiers and trying to, trying to Put it back together, and thank, thankfully, Owen Wilson. You know, we called him right away too, and he said, "Guys, you find the money, and I'm there. You just let me know." And so he was incredibly um, um, cool, and he didn't. Uh, and it's so easy for an actor to bail on a project that feels troubled, and uh, and he never did. He just he really liked it. And um, over the course of the next six or eight months, we 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 found a new financier. They were serious, and as soon as they locked in, everything everything went really well. And um, and the kids were great, and um, you know all those risks just one by one kind of fell away, and uh, so we got, you know, it was a totally cursed project for so many years. Suddenly became this really um, blessed project where the stars just aligned. Yeah, I th what, what was so great was uh, <laughs> um, what was so great was the casting, and that's that was what surprised me so much. Was I remember seeing the trailers, and, I, and initially I was like, Owen Wilson, like that that's yeah. a, that's a weird casting choice, right? And I see Paris Brosnan, I was like. I'm into this, you know, and then, but then you start watching more trailers, you start reading more about it, and then you see the movie, and it's crazy, because he really hasn't done anything, like, crazy action since, like, Black Hawk Down, kind yeah. of, yeah. and it's, it's amazing from the first scene with him, which is right on the plane, with him on the plane with his family, you buy into it, I'm like, oh, he's a family guy, oh, I get that, like, he's yeah. so playful with kids, and so relatable, and then you go, um, into him being an action star, but you ease into it. And he slowly kind of starts finding his way. He accidentally becomes like this guy just fighting for his family. And what was so crazy is I don't have kids or a wife right now, but I have a girlfriend. And I'm like, I'm putting myself in that place. It was like, I, I would actually try to do that, right? I would try to fight for that, you know? Yeah. And so it's that's how it was for me. So can you talk about the casting of Owen Wilson? Yeah. Was there a lot of challenges with that, with studios being like, uh, we don't want him. We want someone like a Chris Pratt or Tom Cruise kind of in this. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, it's part of the reason we did this independently, you know, was uh, for a lot of studios, they have to, you know, sort of follow, they, they can't like really lead trends often. They have to sort of follow things uh, most of the time. So, you know, it, it, you know, we kept getting it. No, it has to be, uh, you know, someone we know is, a, you know, like a Jason Statham or a, Bruce Willis, or you know, yeah. that that that's more uh, the direction we were getting pushed, um, and you know, not to you know, you know, I like them, you know, fine, mm -hmm. but for this movie, we really wanted somebody who felt like someone, you know, we like to joke like without a special set of skills, <laughs> like, so, <laughs> somebody who seems like you know a friend of yours, or you know, like like him. What, how would he survive this, or how would I? Like not not somebody who I've seen be like a Navy SEAL or so, you know something yeah. like that, and. Uh, and so we wanted something that felt very real. And I remember when we first cast Owen, people kept asking, like, are you going to give him a crew cut and make him super butch? And we're like, no, no, no. We want the Marley and me Owen Wilson <laughs> in this situation. And, uh, and, and we stuck to that. And, and, you know, I mean, he, you know, you know, people were worried that, like, will audiences accept him in this? I'm like, you know, we were like, the first time you see him yell at one of his kids, like, just do it, you know, like, 
you see him do that once, and you're like, okay, I've never seen Owen do this kind of stuff, like anything like this. And and that that was it in the trailers. Like as soon as you start seeing him, like you just you buy into it yeah. so quickly, and it's and he's so good. He's Kentucky. so good. Isn't yeah, he? to your point too. I mean, we always knew it was going to be uh, you know kind of a show me you know situation. We had to show material of it for people to really because when you talk about this movie and what it's about and the fact that Owen's the lead, people all have that. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. And. Um, you know, and I remember the first time we seriously discussed it. We were actually right here in this neighborhood. We were we were on Lucas Road driving the Skywalker, and uh, and we just thought, okay. But when you see that trailer, like, what what effect do you have? If it, you know, we knew he could do it. We knew he'd be great. But when you see that trailer, is it uh, at that point are you resistant or are you really intrigued? And we, you know, we kind of put ourselves in the audience's shoes to say, you know, well, I see that trailer and I I have to see that movie. And uh, you have to see it when he throws a kid yeah, off the roof. It's yeah. like you throw a kid <laughs> off the roof. What happens to that kid? Yeah. Like, yeah. That was that was insane, you know, and that scene was insane. But you also have some great casting with Lake Bell, who is just this yeah. wonderful chameleon, how she kind of plays these goofy characters like in What Hot American Summer, and then she plays something so serious, but she's a very, very, very strong female she character. Yeah. And she really really holds her own. She's not really reliant. Like, she asks her husband a lot of times, but a lot of times she's actually saving Owen Wilson's character a lot of times. Yeah. Which, yeah. Is, which is, was phenomenal. Yeah. And so, she's really protecting her kids and she's thinking for herself because sometimes they are separated. That's not a spoiler or anything, but they are separated for some periods of time and she's taking the initiative to do a lot of stuff. So yeah. can you talk about kind of the development of her character and not making her this damsel in distress? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's well said. Yeah, we, we kept saying that, like, uh, we don't want a damsel in distress. In, in distress. We want somebody who... Uh, it's sort of a two-hander, you know. It's two parents, you know, protecting their children, and and uh, you know, and she's so strong, and she's, you know, one of the the great things about her too is she makes you like Owen's character more. The fact that he married her makes him substantial. You know, if if she was like, you know, some like, you know, you know, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, like, you know, super actressy, you know what I mean? Like feeling like. You wouldn't like him as much, but there's something about their chemistry, and they're funny together, and and you can you you can see at a glance why they fell in love in the first place. They have a similar sense of humor, and and uh, and boy, you know, she's she really went for it. She you know, it was fun too. She was like, uh, she's like you know, in every movie they like, they're like, oh, not so intense with the eyes. Like take your eye, like cool it down. <laughs> she's like, it's so nice that you guys are never saying that. Just go for it, do it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because she can be really intense. And her, just her yeah. action shots are so powerful. I mean, in editorial, we had just all these different options, and each moment was really hard to decide because she just gives you a ton, even in the moments where she's not uh, speaking. And mm -hmm. you know, we were really lucky to have actors that smart too. I mean, we have, I mean, Owen Wilson's an Oscar-nominated writer, and and Lake Bell is a you know Spirit Award-nominated writer, and to have actors that are that talented with dialogue and with, you know, just you know, a sense of script is really um, a blessing for us. That helped a lot. Yeah, and then you bring back oh, uh, Pierce Brosnan Pierce, in this yeah. great role where you first meet him and he's completely against type. Yeah. And I yeah. love that. And we were talking about this before too, where he's just, he's instantly likable. Even if he's not this like perfect suave guy and stuff, he's he's very, very like, oh, I buy that, you know? And yeah. I want to watch more of Pierce Brosnan doing that stuff. So yeah, talk a little bit about yeah. him too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Pierce is an amazing like he's such a good character actor like he can really do character stuff and and he sort of came up in theater in london doing that kind of thing and uh and then he came to america and his uh, apparently his very first audition was for remington steel he booked a series and then and it was off from there and and so you know everyone thinks of him as like you know the handsome guy and in but I mean, he can do like he can he can really uh, really do some stuff. And it is challenging to unhandsome Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> <laughs> you, really can't, you can't beat it out of that guy. I mean, he's really uh, you know we really want to go rough and bearded and red and ruddy and alcoholic looking, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's still like Jesus. Still gorgeous. Still, still gorgeous. gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a yeah. it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. We're yeah, not, we're... Can not be unappealing. <laughs> it's basically. true. It's true. Yeah. And man, he is. Uh, you know, it was funny. We were there shooting for. I think six weeks before Pierce got there, or five weeks or so, but we were, you know, towards the end of the schedule, and, you know, and I mean, in Thailand, you know, it took them a minute to know who Owen was, and um, and they didn't have any idea who Lake was, but, you know, it mm -hmm. took them a minute, but after he'd been there for a while, they knew that he were the stars of the movie, so they, they had some attention around town, but then Pierce got there, oh my God, we showed up at the airport in Chiang Mai to greet Pierce, and it was like, you know, you think it was the Beatles or something, I mean, <laughs> yeah. he is, he is a, a full-blown international movie star, no doubt. And he's so nice. Like, I mean, he would literally 
take like a thousand photos with people. Like, I mean, he, he's like the nicest guy. And, uh, he will take the time. And we were waiting for him on set one day, and there was a, a Thai kindergarten class that had come to, to, to set to visit. And we were waiting, and we were kind of in a hurry. And he was signing autographs with his kindergarten class. And like, Pierce, we got to go. He's like, no. <laughs> I'm going to sign every one of these autographs. We're like, OK, you know, yeah. that's for a good reason. Yeah, that's and, crazy. You have a great James Bond joke in there that I won't ruin, but it's phenomenal. Uh, it's a very subtle hint, but I love it. Um, <laughs> and the theater went nuts for that as well. Um, that was great. But can you talk about just with the kids? I mean, what was so great about that was you have this action thriller with a family, and it's, I mean, the kids are an important part about it, and they always have to pay attention to them. Like, they, yeah. they are, like, they sometimes are, you stay here and I'll go and stuff like that, but sometimes they'll leave the kids like, okay, now you're in charge of your sister. You are in charge. And can you talk a little bit about just that? That, that was so incredible, because you don't see a lot of that either. You see these action thrillers with, like, Liam Neeson trying to get his, you know, daughter and stuff like that. And, but these are small kids, and they're throwing them off buildings, and they're hiding them in bushes and underneath, you know, stairwells and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was important for us to keep the family together as a unit. Like, in, you know, really in most movies like this, you know, step one is you hide the kids under a thing and leave them there, and then step two is you right. have your movie, you know. And, right. uh, and uh, we really wanted to have them there, you know, the whole time. Like, how would you, you know, as a parent, like, how, you know, it's, it's a two-front war for Owen's character. He's, he's got, you know, these, this, this, you know, these adversi or adversity, you know, to deal with in the world, but then he's also got to convince his kids to do what he says, and you know, there, I mean, there's moments as a parent, like, it's like, I'm in a rush, I gotta get to work, my kid won't get in the car, and it's like, what do you do at that moment? Do you just push him down into the seat and strap him in, and <laughs> you know, and then the neighbors think you're crazy, you know, like, I mean, it, it, there's, there are those moments, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, for real. And, um, and we wanted to capture that in a, in a in a bigger setting, but you know, going into the movie, that was frankly my biggest, you know, from a directing standpoint, that was my biggest fear is like, these kids don't work, the movie doesn't work. Cause yeah. you know, there's, there's some really heavy lifting they have to do mm -hmm. to stay in the movie that whole time. You know, there's, they, they really have to hit some, some emotional uh, places. And, yeah, uh, a, lot of, a lot of dialogue. And if they weren't as good as they were, mm -hmm. you know, we'd end up really trimming uh, their performances and editorial just you know out of necessity and that was a big fear because if they if they get you know cut down it's gonna they're gonna feel like props they're gonna they're gonna feel like we're just using them for an emotional um, resonance that's not you know totally working but if their performances really work the whole movie works so it was you know mm -hmm. we knew Owen Lake and Pierce were gonna be amazing but um, the kids it's just a it's it's crap shoot. yeah, yeah. Crap shoot. And and so, so we approached it like let's treat them just like we treat the stars like let's you know there's moments where you know We'd say like, you know, I don't know what it's like to be nine. You know, I, I don't remember that well. Like, I need you to be the expert. You know, and and like, what would you do at this moment? And and a lot of the moments in the movie that I love the most are are things they just did. You know, there's a moment where one of the girls just turns and like hugs her sister because mm -hmm. they're scared. Like she's scared, and that was her doing that. That, that wasn't like written. That wasn't you know uh, something we asked her to do. Like they just knew they could be themselves and be real in those moments and no one was going to be like that was wrong what what are you doing you just blew a take you know that you know it, it, they 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 had free reign and we you know along those lines we never set marks for them uh you know the cinematographer uh we asked to like you know we never want to set marks for the kids we never want them to have to stand in a certain light like we want them to have free reign if they want to change it from take to take it's 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 their performance, mm -hmm. and well, I, I thought that was that's a great point too. Was just the real human moments when you said that the hug thing was there were so many natural moments like that, and so many moments where I think it's skimmed over in TV and film all the time. And you guys had so many of those in there where you know you see like a um, Keeper Sutherland twenty four, and people are like, when does he go to the bathroom? When does he? Eat? And you never see that because <laughs> it's boring, right? <laughs> but literally, you guys are like the kids are like, I'm hungry, and it's like we know. You know, or I have to use the bath. That was a gut wrenching moment. It's like I have to use the bathroom, right? And it was like you guys wrote that in there, and you spent time on it. That was like a two minute scene yeah. where it's oh, it's gut wrenching, and you know it's that. And then there's a scene between one girl and and I won't ruin it with her and uh, um, Owen later in the movie, but it's just it, it's really really well done with bringing those kids into the Thank moments you. and stuff. Thank but you. I want to talk about the uh, <laughs> the insane moment of throwing the kids off the building because that that scene was bananas it was just it was it was so crazy because 
you see in the trailers, but the way that it unfolds there, like you were talking about how you get your kid in the car, right? Yeah. Owen Wilson, what what isn't really shown too much in the trailers, what's shown in the movie is he has to convince his kids to actually agree to be thrown off a building, and he does an insane, crazy job with do, making that making that happen. So can you talk about the evolution of that scene because that that had to be hard to shoot in general. Yeah, it, it was. was. It was, it was the it. biggest, you know, our biggest set piece, obviously, in the entire movie, and yeah. I think we spent a good, you know, four or five days on that alone. Yeah, and I mean, we, we try to, you know, when writing, we try not to think about like. We try not to write just things we know how to do, and so this is one like we wrote. We're like, I don't know how we're ever gonna do this, but you know, let's let's find a way. And uh, and it was funny with uh, we wanted to, you know, we were originally gonna use uh, uh, we found some uh, stunt girls who were who actually looked like our girls. One was from Zimbabwe and hadn't worn shoes until she was like 10 or so, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, it was a... Uh, One was from Australia, there was, yeah, check by, there's a, you know... And they were tough. They, they were, were tough, tough. Yeah. yeah, and they were willing to do anything. Our plan was to, to, to put them on the wires and throw them, and uh, we came up with a plan that actually worked, which, um, you know, we were doing a test run, and you want to tell it? Yeah, yeah and I, I was looking at my iPad of the test run, and my son, uh, I brought my family with me, and, you know, my kids were, like, in Thai school, and it, it was really fun, and... And I, I was watching on my iPad like the stunt being done, and my four-year-old son w like saw it over my shoulder, and he's like, "I want to do that." And so Drew and I were like, "Let's do that. Let's let's bring my son. We'll throw my son off the roof, <laughs> and uh, and we'll let the actresses watch. And if he doesn't freak out, maybe they'll want to do it." And and uh, and it worked. And you know, so I threw my son off. It was like a four-story <laughs> roof, and uh, and so I threw. Oh, and, and I mean, he was on a har like he was on a harness, right, but right. It, but it's like up to like <coughs> a construction crane. You know what I mean? So not, like, and so I threw him off, and Drew caught him, and he got up. And he wanted to go again, and then all the girls were like, "I want to go next," and, oh, so cool. and including the actresses, the stunt girls yeah. and the actresses all, and the mothers were there, and it became you know you don't want to. Talk a you know a kid actor into a stunt. You don't even want to you know put any pressure yeah. whatsoever. So yeah. the idea was if they really want to do it, then that's a different story. And so you know throwing Henry, John's kid, um, you know it just was like a you know an amusement park ride suddenly, and they were all like you know climbing over each other to do it next. And, yeah. and this was just a rehearsal. She day. got to go twice. I only got to go <laughs> yeah. once. You know it, it, it became like that. And we got so much money. Stop. Uh, and, and we had originally planned it that they'd be like sort of face down so that we could you know swap a stunt yeah. you know stunt kid in. Uh, but once it was the real kids, then we were like, let's flip them so we can see. But then it's like now we're throwing them off a four-story building backwards, <laughs> you know. And and these guys are like letting the rope out to a point that they're, I mean, they're free falling. Like you can tell, like in one of those shots, her torso is below her feet. Like her feet are up, and yeah. and it's her torso that's connected to the rope. So she's free falling, and and they were so brave. And you know, that was one of the things we always told, you know, talk to them about, like. We have, you know, a million ways of movie magic. If there's ever something you're, you know, you don't feel cool with, like, it's it's easy for us to do something different. Yeah. And, uh, and they they got that and knew that. And, you know, there was moments uh, moments you wouldn't even guess that, like, I don't feel comfortable, uh, you know, being near a moped when it tips over, or you know, it, oh, things it things like that, moments. where it's yeah. like, yeah. okay, we we got it covered. And uh, and. And so you know, but they they had a had a good time with it. But it, I mean, it was it was a it was gnarly. You know, we 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 hate using green screens and CGI, so we try to do everything practically. Well, and it showed. It completely showed. And the, uh, Thank you. I've seen a lot of car chases and a lot of motorcycle chases. And like Mission Impossible Five has this insane, awesome just motorcycle chase scene and stuff. I'm not sure if you guys seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And your moped scene <laughs> of them going through the crowd at a mile an hour is way more intense than that scene Thank in Mission Impossible. It had me way more on the edge of my seat. It was just a completely different kind of feeling. Can you t uh, just we talk love. about the evolution of that? Because that, that, that takes a lot of control, I think, for to not, sn so it's an action thriller. It's like, oh, we have to do this car chase scene or this thing yeah. in the back alley, stuff like it. It was like, no, he's got two kids and a wife on this car, on this moped. He can't do that. He's, yeah. He top speeds five miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. We, always so. have, we always ask ourselves, how do we do the slow speed chase? How do we make the really intense, yeah. like, slow speed action? And that's, I don't know, that, yeah. that one really worked, I thought. Yeah, we always talk about, like, how do you do the, the microclimax? Like, so many films, like, end in this bombastic, you're on a thing and people are jumping off, you know, like, <laughs> like and things are exploding. Like, and we're like, what, what's the smallest, like, quietest, like, what's the microclimax yeah. version of this? And so we, we always try to think of, 
you know, this movie really, in some ways, like, it starts sort of big and they, it goes smaller and smaller until the end. And, uh, yeah. and we really like that, that, you know, it, it feels more and more intense as you go, you know, if you're, if you're tightening, you know, tightening it. Tightening yeah, we like that scene too in that, you know, there's a moment where, you know, you have kind of a rabid mob, you know, this, this kind of mob violence mentality, and then you have a moment with one individual within that mob, and he chooses to not, you know, do what you think he's going to do, um, because he's for a moment he's an individual, he's not part of this larger group, and that, yeah, um, that felt like a really nice moment to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll take some audience questions if you guys want to pop yeah, in there and ask great. anything, but, um, you know, while they're getting up there, uh, can we talk about a little bit about the, um, I lost my train of thought, just, uh, just were there any scenes that you guys wanted to get in there that you couldn't, you had to cut for time, or just was this pretty tight, tight nip once you got uh, into the shooting stages? Well, we had, we had so. pretty close. We barely trimmed anything. There's there's a scene or two of Pierce that were so good, but like we had a great scene of him in the hotel that, uh, that you know, the, once we tested it, we're like, okay, we're spending too long in the hotel, so we trimmed out a couple minutes of the hotel just to get into it. Uh, but there was a great, you know, moment with you know Pierce and a woman on the elevator, like, and he, you know, he was, I mean, he, he's so funny, like he, he you so know, funny. like you know, we like to joke that like Pierce was playing the Owen role and Owen was pay, playing the Pierce role, you know. <laughs> that, that's you know. exactly what I said to my friend last night was that the roles are completely switched, and I think that's what I love the most about it. Yeah. That Owen Thank Wilson, you. that that. That 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 switch there was was really good. Thank to have that you. eye on that. Yeah, so really everything we trimmed uh, from the first cut to the final cut was pre riot, you know, in that kind of early yep, yep. part of the movie in the hotel. We we realized we spent a little too much time there. There's some things that weren't totally necessary. That the one casually that we really uh, regret was the the Pierce in the elevator scene, but it was connected to two other scenes, and we could remove like four minutes if we got rid of it. So it became a, kind sense. of a time thing. But from the ride to the end, it changed very, very little, honestly. Yep. Just really, you know, turning screws more than it was anything. Yeah. Awesome. Scalpel work, not really any jackhammer work. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of shaping some of those scenes. You know, there's there's a couple scenes where we just wanted a little more breath in the middle, you know. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it became, yeah, exactly. And amazingly, we sold it to the Weinstein Company, and even from the sale to the finish, it was, uh, almost exactly the same. It's just really, wow. really minor tweaks, and you never know how that's gonna go with any distributor once you, you know, right. once you have a distributor on board sometimes. Yeah, like, you, you sign the deal before you have any idea what the creative <laughs> is gonna be, and that's always scary. Yeah, so. you know, Harvey Weinstein bought it. He, ha he hadn't even seen the whole movie. He'd seen like 10 minutes of it yeah. on a laptop, and was like, I'm buying it, you know. Yeah. That's and, uh, <laughs> and so then Drew, you know. France with like, a DVD, <laughs> like, okay, hopefully he likes the other 90 minutes. Yeah. Because he yeah. it could go anyway, you know, it could be like, great, you know, now that I own the movie, like, let's get rid of those kids, and let's, you know, <laughs> put some dance numbers in, you know, you just never know how it's gonna go. <laughs> Um, and thankfully, yeah. <laughs> a song by Pierce, that would be great. Yeah. It's like, and you do that, you know, like we, we sit there and do that to ourselves. We're like, what if, what if he wants to want to do like, it? Yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen? And it's Harvey, so we got to make him happy. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's, that. there's that. I was curious, you've had a few movies now. Um, what, was, what was the experience filming in Thailand compared to other locations? Amazing. It was great. It was Amazing. great. Amazing. Like, but, yeah. yeah, the Thai crews are incredible. Like, it was, uh, I would say, you know, my favorite filmmaking experience ever. For sure. And, yeah. and we, we tried to really, uh, we didn't want to show up as like a big like army of, you know, Americans showing up and, you know, we, we wanted to like become like a part of the Thai crew. And so we brought very few people with us. It was almost exclusively Thai. Um, and, you know, it, it, some departments might have one, uh, we had a guy from Canada, a guy from France, and maybe an Australian and a Brit. And an American costume designer. I mean, we had, yeah, yeah and then less than Everyone Thai. else was Thai, yeah. and, and it was so fun. Like, um, and they felt very creatively you know, connected to the movie. A lot of times when you shoot, you know, whether it be in LA or Toronto or anywhere, you know, a lot of the crew. And Louisiana. Or, or Louisiana, yeah. They're, they're, they're there to do a good job, but they don't truly care how it turns out. They're, they're there to collect the paycheck, and they're not going to, you know, intentionally do a bad job, but they don't, they're not emotionally invested. And we felt like this Thai crew was, they were, they're, they're, they're such a, there's so much pride in that country and the fact that we we're shooting there, they wanted to make sure this film was great and they really, um, and they, you know, most places, departments don't really help each other and usually it's union rules, you can't, you know, you know, someone in the, you know, a grip can't help our art department carry their stuff out because there's these lines between departments and um, in Thailand, none of those lines exist and everyone's helping each other and it was a really, 
cooperative effort, and that was very different. It felt like, you know, being in film school again, but like having like 100 people on your crew versus, <laughs> versus like two people who, you know, and everyone's helping each other. And, and I, yeah, it was really, it was really great. Yeah. A wonderful experience. Um, so I was wondering about, you guys have a lot of experience in your previous films with horror, but this is kind of horror in a very, very relatable sense, like real world, absolutely terrified this could happen. Um, could you talk about some of the things that you brought from your previous films that maybe were a little more sci-fi-ish to, to this kind of real world grounded in reality experience? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, a, a lot of horror and comedy, we actually started like before anyone like, we did a film called The Dry Spell, which was a comedy, which is where we started, and then we started into horror, and then people got to know us from that. Um, but it's, both of those things are, you're building in anticipation and then trying to pay it off in an unexpected way. And, and so comedy works sort of along that, that uh, paradigm, and, and so does horror. And uh, you know, this being a thriller, uh, you know, follows, follows a, you know, we do a lot of that in this, where you know, that you, we create, you know, try to create suspense towards, you know, something happening and then something happens you don't expect and now there's a, you know, we have to figure out a new thing to do and, uh, and so. Yeah, I, I mean, our previous three movies have a similar, you know, through line in that there's characters, it's kind of a regular day or they're you know, maybe doing something irregular, but it's a, it's a day and something happens and then, you know, chaos ensues and they need to try to survive and so you know quarantine and devil and as above so below all had that kind of structure mm -hmm. um we like to joke sometimes that our, our characters never change clothes in our movie that like it's always <laughs> in one day this time they changed once so we, yeah, we, yeah. we threw our costume designer a bone on this one <laughs> yeah. but, uh, one change of clothes yeah one change of clothes uh okay. but I, for whatever reason we love that kind of incidental you know chaos or, or crisis kind of movie yeah so there were a few things that were uh, kind of um kind of hit points all the way through. One was definitely stay 10 steps ahead. That was always, that was yeah. definitely pushed through a few times. But the big thing was the little girl always asking for the story of how she was born. Yeah. So can you talk about where that came from? That actually came from uh, uh, my first son. When, when <clears throat> my, you know, my son Henry was born, uh, it's like, you know, maybe over the course of your life you see like one or two things that are truly m miraculous. And, and for me, you know, uh, you know, I know it sounds cliche. The birth of my son was, but, and I don't mean it like that. Like, he got caught in, you know, not to get too graphic. He got caught in my wife's birth canal, and all of a sudden, you know, alarms were going off, and they rushed in all these doctors, and they were going to do an emergency C-section. And uh, uh, the doula who was there told my wife, like, talk to him, Ta tell him, tell him to to move through it. Um, or they're gonna have to, you know, pull him out and 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 so my wife started like ye like yelling to him to to like seriously like you know like get through the birth like and and you could see in the machines his heart rate was crashing because he was stuck and she was talking like talking to him and then you could see on the the monitors like objectively like not not you know this was it wasn't in my head like you could see objectively he was reacting to her asking him what to do and it was. It was this moment of, you know, it's probably the last time you ever listened to her, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you could see he was, you know, at that moment. You know, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was truly, like, miraculous. And, uh, we always loved that idea, like, that idea that Dula said that day, too. And I'm only, I wasn't there, <laughs> obviously. But, but he told me that, uh, you know, that he knows your voice, you know. He knows, yeah. you know, even pre-birth, he knows this one voice. And uh, that was a, an idea that really... Uh, stuck with us. Well, I, I love that where it's at, because the girl asks several times during the movie to hear the story, and he's like, no, 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 <laughs> and you wait for the, and the audience wants to know it too, right? And yeah. I always thought, it, by the end of the movie, I kind of forgot about it, but then like, yeah, but then what, I did, yeah. but then when it got to the end, all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. yeah, and then they tell the story, and it's such a great tie back to the movie, because it seems like that it's, you know, she's a fighter, and that's what this whole thing was, like this yeah. family who fights their way through, you know, and doesn't give up, so yeah. um, that, that was just amazing. Um, can we, in the, you. You know, kind of one of the last like points, that. yeah, uh, just what was the hardest scene to get right mm -hmm. um, in the entire movie, just throughout the process of either writing or shooting it, mm -hmm. and then also uh, what was your most proudest moment on the film that came out, just that, that's, that worked out perfectly. Oh, good question. Oh, that's a, that's uh, a toughie. I'd say, uh, there's a scene near the end uh, where I, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, 
sort of the last climax, there's a scene with the oldest daughter and, and Owen Wilson um, near the end. And it's a very, it's a visceral scene. It's, it packs a you know, pretty big punch. And that was, frankly, the scene I was the scared, like I was going into the movie, I was like, okay, this, if this isn't calibrated perfectly, uh, it's not gonna work at all. And people are gonna reject it. And, I was and, also shocked that the studio let that stay in, by the way. Well, I know. I was shocked because I've never seen that before. That was, I know. Well, if, you we're notice, like a, if you notice, there's literally no way to take it out. Too. <laughs> there's <laughs> not. As we design those more challenging scenes to be, like, you Against cannot get around them. And we have no money for reshoots. And, yeah. Yeah. If you buy this movie, this, <laughs> you can go from the scene before to the scene after, and it wouldn't make any yeah. sense. So, yeah, well, that's kind of my design. You know, throwing the kids off the roof, you assume when you see the trailer, like, oh, that's going to be the climax of the movie. But that happens, like, you know... You know, yeah, half you know, halfway or a third of the way into the movie, like that's that's pretty early, and and then when people see that, you know, in their heads, you know, I think they go, okay, well, you know, it'll it's only downhill from here, but no, it keeps going, and and so that that was for us sort of the natural conclusion, but it's it's such an emotional scene for both the girl and for the father, and and um, and it's gnarly, and so yeah, I I would say that was the most challenging. Uh, that's the, I, maybe the scene I spent the most time like obsessing over and you know trying to figure out exactly how to get it right and then in editorial too it was like editorial know, exactly just, what length and yeah, that one we spent probably the most time on I would say yeah yeah because um, you know you, yeah. that can't go on too long or or, it, or know, be too short or be know. too short yeah it's you know take yeah. the right balance yeah I'd say the one I'm most proud of this is gonna be kind of a strange uh, choice but because it's you know, not any of the action, it's kind of before the action happens, but there's a scene in the hotel bathroom between Lake and Owen um, that I always loved on the page, and it was always like, okay, well, you know, hopefully this connects, and the performances are great, and hopefully the audience likes it, because it's, it's kind of an emotional couple scene, you know, where, where she's you know, trying to suffer in silence, and he catches her, and he wants to make sure she's okay, but you realize what he really wants is her to tell him that it's okay, and that, and she won't do that for him. And, and um, we've gotten more comments on that scene from people like, oh, I've had that moment with my wife, or I've had that moment with my husband. And, um, and I, I don't know, that makes, I'm really proud of that moment because I feel like their performances are just spectacular and it really yeah. connected. Yeah, no, it just, uh, th that's really the movie. It's real and it's relatable and you watch it and you're like, I hope that I would act like that if I were to put in that situation yeah. with my kids or wife, you know, it's, or husband. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you. yeah, thank you guys for being here. Thank you very thank much, you Google. Um, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.